Are you good? Great. Hi, everybody. My name is Christina, and today I will be talking to you about TypeScript. Uh, today's presentation is brought to you by the letter R for runtime error and by the number not a number. <laughs> so first of all, let me say this. I love JavaScript, but if I could change one thing about it, it would be the type system, or rather the lack of a type system. Because although JavaScript has types in the sense that it has numbers and booleans and strings and so on, it has no concept of a type system or any type checking whatsoever. And of course, it's also an interpreted language, so you have no choice but to catch your errors at runtime. And when you do, you tend to get error messages that are much less informative than they could be, and so your code is trickier to debug than it really needs to be. In a lot of other computer programming languages, you have compilation and you also have static typing, which means that you can catch your errors at compile time, and when you do, they tend to be much more specific in nature. So what TypeScript does is it allows us to bring that world of static typing into JavaScript. And that makes, it, um, that makes it easier to write code and also to debug it. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to use TypeScript. This is a very short program that I wrote in TypeScript. And if it looks exactly like JavaScript, that's because it is. Uh, all valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript. So there's absolutely no overhead to getting started with it. And that's one of the things that I like about it. So you can just use any JavaScript. And then as you start to get comfortable with the different functionality that TypeScript provides, you can start to add that onto the code. So right now, this is a TypeScript file. So before I can actually use it, I have to compile it. And the way I do that is I write TSC in my command line. I already have TypeScript installed. And then the name of the file. And then that's going to spit out a JavaScript file of the same name. And I'm going to drag it over here so you can see that they are basically the same file, except for maybe some white space. And now I can run that JavaScript file like any other JavaScript file. So let's do a console log um, time parser date.m. Looks good. So this is a quick function that takes a date and a format, and then it formats that date and returns it. And we're going to run that time.js. Oh no, type error. Undefined is not a function. You don't see that 13 million times a day. <laughs> so we could debug this on the JavaScript side, but I want to show you how different it is when you're working with TypeScript. And this JavaScript file is going to get overwritten every time that we compile anyway, so we shouldn't be doing anything there. So actually, first, I should mention, so TypeScript has what is called type inference, which means that the compiler is going to look at each function and its internals, and then it's going to try to infer what types those arguments should be based on the methods that you're using on them inside of the function. But what I like even more than type inference, which is basically like what we do when we look at a function, is type declaration. And TypeScript supports that as well. And what that looks like is this, because you can just tell TypeScript that you intend for date to be of type date, and that you intend for format to be of type string, and that you intend the return value to also be a string. So that's type declaration. And now that we have that, it's even more way easy to debug what just happened. So we'll do tsc uh, time.ts to compile it. Totally different error message. Argument of type number is not assignable to parameter of type date. So what happened was we made a mistake here. And date.now, although you might think it's a date object, it's actually of type number. It is a numerical representation of the Unix epoch time, and it is not of type date. So none of these date methods that we're using up here or here are valid. So that makes it really easy for us, much easier than undefined is not a function, to be like, oh, right, this is actually a number. What I need to be passing it is new date. And now this should work. So before we run it again, though, I want to show you something else. So this, op this function has two options. I can either have Unix time or parse time. But what happens if I misspell parse time <laughs> and I get something like that? This also happens all the time, right? Well, this will compile. We're not going to get any errors because TypeScript doesn't know any better. It just knows to expect a string. But when we run it, we're going to get the correct answer for Unix time. And then we'll get nothing for our second one. We're just going to get undefined. Uh, a great tool that we could use with TypeScript that we don't have in JavaScript is enum. And enum is a way to define an object that can only take on certain values. And they are very useful for situations like this, where you have 
logic that is based on a string because strings are really easy to get wrong and it's also easy to forget like what value your string is maybe supposed to have. So we can define an enum that can only take on the values of Unix time and parse time. And because I have a linter installed for TypeScript specifically, it's already helping me out here and only giving me the two values that I could use. So I can say, great, Unix time. And then down here, I can say format dot uh, parse time. Awesome. I can do the same thing down here, format dot Unix time. And then format dot parse time. And now this will work beautifully once I compile it. And it has the benefit of, if I make another typo, my linter's already calling attention to that, and the compiler will too. So if I try to compile that again, and there's something wrong with the enum value that I specified, I'm going to get that problem. Parse tie does not exist on type of format. So then I come back here, and I fix it. And now this compiles, and it will also run when it's time to run it. Perfect. The enum compiles to some pretty funky JavaScript <laughs> that you would never bother writing. But it's nice to have when you can do it as easily as that. So that was a quick example on basic types. Now I want to show you an example where you might use TypeScript in a slightly more complex way. This is another piece of code where we have an implementation of the merge sort algorithm. And this function here is using these other two helper functions to sort an array. So the way we would do that is merge sort, and then we have an array, and maybe we have five and four and six and one. Awesome. So now we can run this function, and there's no errors in this one. This one will work. And uh, the way we would declare a type for this, if we wanted to, is we know we want arrays for all of these, but we have to tell it the type of thing that goes in that array. So the way we would do that one is like so. And that's awesome, and that will compile. But now I've kind of painted myself into a corner, because what if I want to merge sort an array of strings or chars? A, B, I should make that C, now, B, now, <coughs> Z, make that A, <laughs> put Z over here. Give it something, give it some work to do, right? So now we're getting errors that the linter is highlighting. And if I try to compile this, it will also error. But the neat thing about TypeScript, or one of the neat things about it, is I'm still going to get a JavaScript file. Oh, wait, I did the old one. Sort.ts. So even though it's going to give me an error, because I'm trying to pass a string array to a function that expects a number array, I'm actually going to have uh, a, a JavaScript file that I can still use if I want to. So TypeScript is never going to stop you from using your buggy code if that's what in your heart you truly want to do. Um, but there's actually a better way <laughs> to specify the type that this function should have. Um, one alternative is to use the any type. You can just say, I want an array of whatever. As long as it's an array, I'm happy. But now this is a little too broad for our function, because you could pass it an array of numbers, and it could return an array of strings, and that would be valid. So I know the function's not supposed to do that, but TypeScript isn't helping me implement it now. So what we really want here is a generic. And generics are really cool, because it's a way to do like Mad Libs for your types. You can sort of template out that you want to say something about a type that you don't really know what type it's going to be yet. But once it's there, you have like things to say about it. So now in this case, we have a generic array type defined for this function. It takes an array of something type t. t is the convention to use, but you can call it whatever you want. And then it's going to return an array of the same type. So if I get numbers in, it's numbers out. And now that we have that template set up, we can give it, actually, yeah, let's just give it to everything. So merge function also needs some arrays over here. Awesome. And then half also needs some generics. There we go. So now we have beauty. And we can compile this again. And then we'll run it. Oh no, another error. <laughs> Here's a great example of how generics can be really helpful, even if you don't know the actual type that you're referring to yet. And arrays are a great use case, because it's easy in an array to forget how many levels in you're nested at a, at a given time. And so you can see that this error message is warning of something about like type, like array array is not assignable to type like t array. 
And I already know what that's talking about is this situation here, where we have what looks like an array, but it's actually an array of arrays. So this return value needs to be array of array t. And now we're all good, and everybody's happy, and we can <coughs> compile, and we can run. node sort.js and everything is awesome. So those are the two demos that I have for you today. There is a ton more stuff that you can do with TypeScript that I haven't shown you, but I hope that this is enough to get you interested in looking into it and maybe like, you know, firing it up on your computer and seeing what you can do with types. Um, I've provided in my slides the code that I used in these demos and also some instructions for getting started with TypeScript, how to install it, what plugins you might want to get for your different text editors, and also Gulp. If it's something that you want to integrate into your workflow, you'll probably want plugins for either that or for Grunt. And here are also some links for more viewing and reading material. I recommend that at the very least you watch this YouTube video because it's about how types are very messy in JavaScript and it is hilarious and educational at the same time. So that's my talk for today. Thank you very much. <laughs>